Welcome everyone. This video I'm going to demonstrate a few different um, devices that can be used with this Tesla power transfer. I've done um, extensive tests uh, that has given me this data which we will quickly go over. Um, first of all I suppose we'll start with um, the incandescent bulb. This is just a 12 volt incandescent bulb. Uh, that you would use as a um, tail light in a vehicle. Um, so it has a high and a low beam. And basically, uh, to do this test, I just use the one, uh, one element there rather than both of them. Um, it put, puts out a significant amount of light, so there's just no, not much point having both of them burning there. A lot of my um, efforts here are really about longevity, not um, seeking, you know, the maximum brightness as my main priority. My main priority is purely uh, longevity. How long and how much can you get from your power? So we've got the... Um, battery bank here which is uh, currently configured in parallel I'll disconnect that now so that we can reconfigure this so this battery here being charged this these two batteries being charged will become the drive battery and this battery here is going to become the receiving battery so this battery here is flat um, I can demonstrate that to you. A lot of this is going to be tricky for me because I have to do this all one-handed. Um, I don't have my own video crew. So bear with me. Oh, whoopsie. That's not a good thing. Alright. Don't short terminals of batteries. Even when they're flat, that will produce uh, a bad result. Okay, so this battery bank is flat. Let's uh, get the meter in here. We'll power that up. We can test this battery bank, which has now just been wired in parallel. And so we got that on there. So the power there is 12.3 volts. These batteries are officially flat at 12.1 volts. I don't recommend going below that because you just damage your own batteries. Um, and they will damage quite rapidly if you drop a sealed lead acid battery below 50% of its available power you are damaging it so those are I usually stop these um, tests so the primary battery set when it gets down to you know 12.1 um, volts for an individual battery uh, adding the two together is obviously 24.2 volts so if you measure it across here it'll be 24.2 volts and that'll be officially flat uh, we can have a look at what the voltage is for these now before we start and okay so it's higher than 20 volts which I had the meter set to so we're looking at 27 volts fully charged Okay, so what we're going to do is connect the negative between the two batteries. So we've got this wire here, and that goes there. Okay, so we've got negatives of both battery banks, the primary running batteries and the secondary receiving batteries are connected via the negatives. Okay, these two in parallel, these two in series. So now I will add this incandescent bulb. I place this incandescent bulb inside a ceramic 
or ramekin pot or whatever it's called um, basically because this achieves such a high temperature that uh, it became dangerous in fact testing it with um, my uh, voltage uh, sorry temperature probe um, if we get a shot of that now it's 26.5 degrees Celsius so we'll plug that in um, it got to a hundred and 86 volts was the highest I recorded it okay so uh, sorry 186 degrees Celsius so hence the reason for um, placing it inside that small um, ceramic pot you can see that lights up fine and according to my records here that incandescent bulb 12 volt I have the different run times so it ran for five hours just as it is there um, and at which point this run battery set was down to um, the 24.2 volts which is officially flat at that point I swapped those around these batteries became the uh, receiving batteries and, and vice versa so um, the first test first run was five hours then 3.5 then the third run 1.5 from what I can tell if you don't have what's called a balance load um, it could be considered a balance load um, like this small AA system which has now been running non-stop for uh, I believe it was 21 days ago we did this so we're looking at 144 days now um, coming close to requiring a battery swap but I get around about 40 days on average um, before I have to turn those batteries around um, the run batteries become the charge batteries so still that has not received any power at all I have not put any power into this system and it's now been running for what 144 days now so uh, if you have an unbalanced load that's when you get results like this where it appears on average that every consecutive run is approximately half of the run before it so only half of that power is being transferred from the point primary battery series set into the secondary battery set in parallel so only half of that so it does pay to get yourself a decent um, load that is balanced in accordance to the batteries so this small amount of amperage that this pulls is uh, related or relative to the amount of capacity in those batteries so if you were to achieve the same setup uh, you know a balanced load for um, for this larger set then you may get a better opera a better run time um, so the next one I did was this larger 12 volt light an LED light I'll connect that up and show you how bright that is warning bright light okay so that's clearly bright enough yeah, we had another power outage last night which um, I think is going to be a regular occurrence from here on in because they can't sort out their rubbish system that they've all been making us pay for um, ironic we paid so much and where did it get us nowhere so that light uh, would be this 12 volt LED setting so it ran for 12 hours on the first run batteries were rotated then we get 6.5 hours 4 hours 2.5 so we're looking at a total of 27 hours and 25 minutes for this light before 
one set of batteries gets recharged. You don't recharge both sets. You charge recharge one set only. Um, and so one set has to be empty and one set has to be full before you want to um, start that procedure. So we're looking at 27 hours, 25 minutes for that bright LED. Um, again, be better than the uh, incandescent bulb. Uh, the next one was this one, which is a car light, has a fan in the bottom of it, 12 volt fan. And so if we connect that one up, we can see how bright that one is. Okay, and this jumper lead here goes onto that section of said light, bright light again, sorry. Okay, so you can you can hear the fan maybe you can hear the fan by the way that one runs for um in total uh we're looking at 44 hours and 30 minutes again it, it appears to be roughly half for each cycle um so half the power so again that load would not be considered a balanced load and whilst it will work and work for a very long time uh that optimum attitude uh you know optimum uh, outcome here for this double a you know now approaching half a year um is a much better way to go so uh while we've got those jumper leads connected there this is a 12 volt motor um, now I haven't done run times for this one. I don't want to damage the motor and this would be run uh, for as long as is necessary. Uh, I'll try and connect that properly. It's got a fair amount of torque this motor so it's a little tricky with one hand. Okay, does not want me doing that. So let's connect that there, put this one back on. Okay, so that runs that motor as well. Um, transferring that energy, it's not using the energy, it's just transferring it. So if I can try and get that without shorting, leave that on there. Okay, so that's on there now. This would be a good time just to watch the voltage and we'll see voltage increasing for this battery set. Okay, so we've got 12.59 now. Uh, well, we started at 12.3, I think. And these batteries should um, should basically increase in power over a short amount of time or over a long period of time. Um, so rather than just using power, um, it's a case of transferring it. So what I'll do now is disconnect that one. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you could run that for something like a Gerard Morin uh, system. So, basically, trying to balance your load is the most critical thing. Uh, we can also use you know, this same system to run uh, setups like this one, which is a car charger uh, for a phone. So a USB charger and you can plug your iDevice or, or Android device or whatever, anything that takes a USB power uh, and then run that device as well. So hopefully that gives um, everyone a bit of an idea on 
what you can do with this system. There are a lot of uh, other features. You know, basically anything that runs off 12 volts should be able to run off of this system. Uh, my uh, wireless transmitter here. So we'll plug that in. And we can see that that also should operate. Okay, there we go. So plug that in and that allows my wireless uh, systems to run. Uh, that one is dead. There we go. So, so that um, you know works in the same way. It just transfers power from here across to these batteries. Rather than using it, it, it seems to be transferring about half. And I'll put that down to the load being imbalanced. So find yourself the right type of light and you'll get a much, much longer run time. All right. Thanks everyone for watching. Um, if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask. If you've got any ideas or things that you'd like me to test on this system, um, you know, please let me know and I'll see what I, what I can do. Thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe. Tesla's power transfer system. Have a nice day.